recording. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the North Sydney Planning Panel on the 2nd of November, 2022. Um, we are meeting today and acknowledge the traditional owners of this land in which we, we come together and pay the respects to the ancestors and spirits past and present. The panel's role is to deal with matters over 30 million, sorry, under $30 million, any contentious items, any items that have more than 10 objections, and matters that have a variation in the development standard greater than 10%. Um, we, would like to ask anyone who presents before us today uh, to be respectful of others, to be as brief as possible, and to address specifically the points. Please don't necessarily repeat the uh, information that's been submitted in writing, uh, as the panel has read that. I should say the panel has affected the sites, each of the sites and uh, has formed their own view and they've been assisted in that process by reports from council and in doing the briefing that we've just concluded. We have a matter before the uh, public meeting at present and we have uh, another matter in a closed meeting or non-public meeting after this. Uh, at the conclusion of the meeting today, we will uh, come together without the public and make our determination on the matters that are before us. <clears throat> Can I introduce the panel to you? I'm your chairman today. My name's Gary Shields. I've been a consultant planner for about 35 years and worked in councils uh, as well. Uh, I've had a stint in the Land Environment Court. My qualifications include three master's degrees and a PhD in planning. Um, I am a planner and urban designer, and I'm also chair of a number of uh, other panels. Grant, can I ask you to introduce your good self? Thank you, Mr Chair. Uh, my name is Grant Christmas. Um, I'm a solicitor who specialises in uh, planning local government and environment law. Um, in addition to sitting on this panel, I sit on um, six other panels in, in Sydney um, and uh, I undertake um, a, uh, or have a, a private business based in Brookvale, uh, a law firm. Thank you, Grant. David. Um, my name is David Logan. Um, I have a background in architecture and planning and in heritage. I work as a heritage consultant uh, and I sit on uh, two other panels. Um, under Hill and Strathfield, and I chair the Heritage Council's Technical Advisory Panel. I'd also sit on the Parramatta Design Excellence Advisory Panel. Thank you, David. And John's our community representative. Yeah, hi. Uh, my name is John Bohain. I'm also an architect, and I sit on the Sydney North Regional Planning Panel as well. Thank you, John. Uh, I can say that all of the panel have uh, completed their declarations that they do not have a conflict of interest today. And we have also looked at the minutes and noted that the minutes of the previous two meetings have been endorsed by those respective chairpersons. Uh, the matter that we have now to deal with is 18 Vale Street and 560 to 562 Miller Street, Camaray. And I believe that we have um, one presenter. Is that correct? Thanks. Marcus, Jeff, Donnie, and Nicola speak. I'm sorry. Yes. They're written submissions. They're also presenting today. Uh, withdraw that we have four submit uh, present presenting today and i'm wondering if marcus is there yeah yeah oh. yes yes i'm here um good, marcus, uh, yep. 
Uh, Sonny, you, who would like to go first? Can I just say that we'll just put um, Antonio and Joseph in the waiting room until your item comes up? Okay, just put them in this before we speak. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mr. Chair. Jeff Mead, Planning Ingenuity. I'm the consultant town planner for the applicant and I will uh, lead the discussions. I have Mr. with Mr. Mead, me... nice to see you again. Uh, likewise. <laughs> I um, I have with me uh, the project architects from DKO and I also have Marcus Hinzak, a representative of Ford Land, uh, the applicant. Um, we will keep um, submissions very brief um, to the extent that uh, this application um, has quite a bit of background in terms of back and forth with council staff um, and amendments to the scheme in response to early staff comments, um, as well as um, interaction with council's design review panel. Um, we're quite pleased to have um, come to the outcome we have. We think it's um, a great project that um, has, through that process, been refined to respond to, to all the concerns that have been raised by, by council staff, objectors and so on. Um, the staff report is, is detailed. It deals with the key issues um, and assesses um, some of the non-compliance of the uh, non-compliances of the proposal. Um, we agree with the assessment, of course, um, the conclusions it's reached, and um, we um, endorse the recommendation. Um, the only thing we did want to raise um, in some more detail, and of course, um, be open to answer any questions the panel may have um, about any aspect, but the, the things that we wanted to raise were just a couple of the conditions. Um, it's only two conditions, and we think that they're pretty straightforward amendments that we seek. Um, condition 37, which relates to uh, the placement of plant uh, on the site. Um, we simply seek an amendment to that condition um, to allow uh, for some air conditioning plant and solar panels to be incorporated on the roof. Um, the way the condition is worded um, it precludes that. Um, we would just seek um, the brackets at the start of the condition um, if that were replaced with um, the words with the exception of air conditioning or solar panels on the roof. Um, that would solve um, our issue um, with that um, just to allow that plant to be on the roof. Um, the second condition is C49. Um, we've discussed this with um, staff's uh, assessment planner. Um, it refers to eight adaptable dwellings, which is in fact all the dwellings. Um, it should be two. Um, we've discussed that with the council staff planner and they agree that's just an error. Um, so C49 uh, replacing eight with two. Other than that, uh, we accept all the conditions and um, we uh, we urge the panel to endorse staff's recommendation. But as I said, more than happy to answer any questions that the panel may have. Do we need to hear from anyone else, uh, Mr. Mead? Not unless there's any uh, questions, Mr. Chair. There are a few questions and um, would uh, David, would you like to lead off? Um, yes, I had a, a query about the um, the condition of the site, uh, of the proposal really, um, adjacent to the area of the basement that projects to within 900 millimetres of the boundary. Now, in the... Northern during, boundary. North, sorry, northern boundary, yeah. Um, in the um, during set that I've been provided with, there was no cross section that goes through that area. Um, so I couldn't see how much or how, how it is to landscaped above that basement area and the depth of soil and whether in fact the trees that are shown on the model could actually grow to the height that's indicated in the model. Sure. Um, I'll pass that to DKO to respond to uh, in terms of the plans that we need to look at. Uh, can, can maybe we we allow a few questions that we have and someone can be reviewing the first one as we give you a few others. <laughs> That'd be helpful. Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, the second question we had related to the communal area. Uh, we thought that token space was, and the ground floor uh, was relatively inaccessible and also fairly inadequate, uh, as people would be 
not encouraged to use that space because of the difficult in um, negotiating the path. And we were wondering if there was a possibility and indeed whether your planning group had considered uh, a part of the roof area for communal open space. Um, a further question relates to the um, car parking and the total number of car parking spaces that you're providing uh, is similar to what was provided in a global sense, reduced in numbers, but changed to accessible spaces, as I understand. Um, if you'd just like to confirm that, that's right, it's not good. So we're wondering if there was the opportunity to reduce the basement at all. And one of those key areas could be where your uh, water um, tank is with a view to getting some deep planting close to that northern boundary where the basement comes to uh, within 900 millimetres. Panel, were there any other questions that we had? Um, Chair, just a, a matter relating to this condition um, that's been um, referred to condition C37. Um, we were aware that, that, that the applicant had an issue with respect to a restriction of, as to the air conditioning, but the issue about solar panels, that they're not shown on the plans. Um, I, was just, I was just wondering, is, are they in the same location as the air conditioning plant? If so, how many solar panels are we talking about? Well, that's, that's effectively a new matter that hasn't, as I understand it, previously been, been brought to our attention. Yeah, sure, I can answer that one quickly. Um, really, that's just foreshadowing um, the well, the preclusion of that happening into the future. Um, it's um, as it, the solar panels um, can, in fact, be delivered through the exempt development provisions or, or CDC, and it's really about not having a condition that would preclude that in the future. Um, were that the desire um, of, of the ultimate building form, or even down the track um, yeah. for a, a strata body? Yeah. Uh, so it was really to, to preclude that from happening um, in, into the future. So future-proofing it, um, so to speak. Yeah, I, look, I would encourage the solar panels to be installed. I was just, I suppose, it, they're not indicated on the plans. I just wanted yeah. confirmation that they were in that area in which the, the AC plant is currently located. It's effectively, a, seems to be a hived-off area on the, on the rooftop um, that indeed is suitable for you know, such utilities. Yeah, I'll be corrected if I'm wrong, but I understand that they're, they're not shown on the plan because they're not part of the proposal at the moment. Right. But it's okay. a matter of future-proofing it um, where that can be desired. Thanks. So coming back to the first point, Jeff, the, uh, the portion of the basement that's 900 off the boundary, it's a fairly large portion. Uh, would it be possible for any of your team that might want to answer to remove that water tank to provide some deep planting and what sort of mounding did you have in mind uh, to get some decent planting for that property to the north? Yeah, look, I'll, I'll just get um, uh, DKO to respond firstly to the question of the design of that landscape. Um, Thank you. So what that, that cross section looks like, please. Um, I guess the... Um... The water tank and the, sorry, the OSD tank in that location unfortunately needs to go in that location, and we've worked through with our civil engineers um, to make sure that that is the only spot for that OSD tank to go. But in terms of the the landscaping that we've currently proposed on the northern edge, there it sort of ranges from uh, four hundred mil to twelve hundred mil mounting up to the northern edge. Uh, which we've worked through with our landscape architect to make sure that we have meaningful uh, planting there for screening purposes. So uh, but part of that space is actually used as communal space as well, near the entry to the north. Um, but unfortunately, you're, you're correct, we didn't provide that section uh, through that basement zone. So that um, the amount of mounding that you've got over that basement area uh, yeah. Application. Could you help us with that, Sonny? Yes. Yeah. 400 and 1200. As in, four, yeah, 400 to 1200 soil depth in that zone. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't yeah. 
And, and then is there a balustrade, well, a retaining wall that retains that? And, and does that have a, a balustrade above that? that? That is correct to the northern boundary. So our section should indicate that, um, section 1, DA303. So it shows an upstand of about uh, 800 mil there and a palisade fence that sits on top of that. Yeah, it's very doesn't go on. No, I think it's just this is further back. Oh. The ground level's level, so yeah. the other one, the ground level is quite high up. Really can't tell the boundary condition from the that section of the scale think, we've got. I think sections one and two go either side of where the, the basement's close to the boundary. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. So you can see a partial mounding occurring there. So you can see in section two, there is, you can start to see a partial mounding there to the northern edge. What what drawing number? 304. 304. That correct? We we do, we are missing that section through that. Yeah. That's the partial mounting. Oh, yeah, yeah, but can't really talk on that. So, There's no soil that shown on it. In fact, this isn't a section three. Right? Well, it's not, you know, it's not really. Good. So you, you mentioned that the purpose of that landscaping was for screening. Yeah. What did you mean by that? Screening the building from the view of the... Really? To, do to the north? Yeah, to do with the privacy to the north. Right. And so, and do we know what you're planting in that area above the slab? Yeah, um, so there, there should have been landscape plans noting species um, on that proposed species. Unfortunately, I don't have the drawing number there for the landscape plans. The concern that the panel had uh, was that in 900 uh, and in a section which we don't have, uh, it was difficult to uh, imagine how you'd plan something substantial in that boundary position. Yeah, the ground uh, the ground level landscape plan does have the details on just um, searching around as we speak um, for the species type but there's there's uh, planting right along uh, that northern boundary um, on that bermed area uh, which is the deep soil area um, in terms of the species type I'm just searching through to to that page um, but yeah there's continuous planting through there at the boundary and then there's also um, higher planting um, surrounding the common open space um, that's shown on uh, the landscape sheet um, uh, DA100 which is called the lower ground floor landscape plan yeah, two hundred. Sure, that one. Sure, it's how we do hundred. They're called PLA. Right. What are the Sorry, PLA is the water gun. Um, no. the the ETA. What well, EL? There's ELA and TRI is the Good, guys, I'm I, I'm seeing CYA um, um, on that drawing number landscape two two hundred. I'm seeing seven times CYA, which if you if you look at the the front sheet, that's a Cyathea cooperi, Australian tree fern. And that's on the other side. 
Um, you actually have 36 pi ELA. Oh, sorry. I'm, I'm looking at the wrong side. Yep, yep. 36 times ELA. Okay, my mistake. It should be ELA Carpus, I think. And what's that? What's the common name? Uh, ELA. Hold on a second. ELA. Let's try to find that. ELA. I I suppose Mark is the concern. Elio Calpus is um, uh, blueberry ash, isn't it? Blueberry ash, I think. Yeah, it's a blueberry ash. We don't. I don't. I can't see it anywhere on your planting schedule. Can I just say, um, yep. ladies and gentlemen, the concern the panel has is, given we've got hard stand and a fairly a structure with being your basement up to 900 from the boundary. It really limits the opportunity for the planting and any sort of reasonable screening. And we're just up seeking from you some sort of encouragement or convince the panel that uh, uh, they haven't observed that correctly. Yeah, look, the, the, if we take your point about the basement being close at that point, um, I think the, um, the relevant point is that the deep soil planting across the site is actually at, um, I think, 23% versus um, the ADG requirement of 7%. So as the site goes um, as a whole, um, there's um, an abundance of deep soil um, more than three times um, the minimum under the ADG. Um, where are the view that um, in that area um, that that um, that interface can be um, can be addressed um, in the manner that it is um, shown on the landscape plan? The fact that there's planting along the boundary plus also planting on the on the podium itself. Um, but the important part being that the um, the deep soil area that wraps along then the, the remainder of the northern part of the site and then down the western part of the site um, we say is um, is in that part of the site uh, that, that's more sensitive and and probably provides more relief to the surrounding buildings, uh, particularly at that corner that um, has an interface with three of the adjoining properties, um, the northwestern corner. And so the focus, the deep soil, and the reason why the, um, the basement car park has been pulled back at that point is to deal with that interface where we where, where we adjoin several properties and several yard spaces. Um, and, and that unfortunately squeezes the basement out at a point um, to provide the functional needs of, of the OSD. But we say that it, it, it's managed um, in, in a reasonable manner in any case. Um, also, it would be nice to, to have that deep soil area continuing right across the whole of the northern boundary. Um, we, we, we think it can be dealt with. Well, thanks for that. Um, I'm wondering if you could just tell us the extent of that uh, basement length that comes um, 900 from the boundary. Is it about 10 metres or 15 metres? Uh, DKA might be able to help with that while I just go to the sheet. About 15 metres. Uh, Robert Scott from Portland, how are you? Good. Yes, it's about 15 metres, um, uh, Mr Chair. And I'm, I'm just not convinced as to how you're dealing with it or I'm not understanding how you're dealing with it in the landscape sense. Uh, is your landscape person there? Jeff, was your landscape uh, architect there? No, no, unfortunately not. Um, I understand. I mean, the issue really goes to that that section, and and yes, it's unhelpful that there's not a section at that that part of the site. I wonder whether um, the 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 landscape plan shows that that species type within that space. Um, there's really a question then um, that remains. The, the question that remains is how. Um, yeah, how that looks in section in terms of the the, the berming or the battering um, to the to the podium. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder whether that is something that um, could, could could be dealt with by a condition to require the detailed sections of that, um, and uh, with, with obviously the objective of achieving um, a, a, well the most generous um, soil depths. Um, as possible. As we said earlier, I think the depths are minimum of 400 mil, but up to 1200 mil in that area. Um, but that needs to be demonstrated, of course, in a section. 
Um, I don't, uh, whilst it's not ideal that there's some uncertainty with what the ultimate outcome might be, I think that the information is there to show that it could be sensitively dealt with if, if um, the generosity in, in, in soil depth was able to be provided um, through some details. Okay. Um, panel, any other questions on that one? The second one then, the communal area of the upper level, is that a possibility? Um, I, I'll speak to that initially, and then um, I might hand it to DKO and even Marcus. Um, this this um, discussion has gone back and forward um, for over 12 months with, with Council. Um, the original scheme did not have common open space, and um, that was put forward on the premise of um, the small strata scheme, um, but the fact um, of the, the generosity in the private open spaces that were provided across the site. Um, and our, our position um, was and remains um, that there's, um, there's not a need um, for the common open space areas because of that and the ability to provide such generous private open spaces. Um, in, 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 in an attempt to, to appease the issue, um, we designed that common open space along the eastern, um, well, the northeastern part of the site. Um, we agree that it's not ideal in terms of its location and its design. Um, we do think that it will add some amenity um, to the site. It does provide a common open space um, that may be used. Um, as I said, our, our first position is that um, there's not a need for a common open space on, on a strata of this size. And in fact, um, you know, experience has been a position taken um, by this council and many other councils on, on small stratas. And in fact, the ADG um, contemplates situations where, where, where it may not be necessary to provide it. Um, so um, yes, it's one of those things, I think you referred to it earlier as um, perhaps a token space. I'm not sure it's a token space that there has been design thought gone into it um, in terms of the landscape design, um, but um, we would be comfortable with, um, with, with that space being giving, given over to private open space. Um, in terms of um, the question of rooftop open space, um, that has um, implications in terms of access um, and a number of other um, issues, um, the, and also an attempt to obviously minimise any impact from having a common open space on, on the roof. Um, we would say that private open spaces probably have much less impact in terms of oral privacy and perhaps even visual privacy for, for the surrounding area. Um, DK, I don't know if you have anything to add to that in terms of practical um, impediments um, to provision of rooftop space. Uh, yeah, look, I think we should probably just maybe talk about our proposal at that ground level. Um, we sort of believe that it is actually a meaningful usable space because we do have a secondary entry off Miller Street um, to the north, northern corner there. So there will be residents moving back and forth from that space. Uh, but I guess the other point is we've actually worked on providing uh, more internal amenity, amenity sorry, in our internal spaces. So our lobby spaces are actually quite generous in a sense where um, they do become more meaningful communal spaces in a sense. And also, uh, I guess, entry bridge access is also an outdoor amenity space that we have there as well. So um, we have looked at alternatives to, to, I guess, provide amenity for the residents. Um, and we do think that the ground level communal open space, um, practicality wise, um, it, it is um, a better spot. In terms uh, of uh, I'll just jump in as well. Um... Correct me if I'm wrong, um, Sonny and Nicola, but we looked at the the rooftop as well. And to get to get um, communal um, to the roof, it would it would require a lift overrun, which which essentially services the rooftop as a another level, which would um, provide a significant breach of height increase, um, yeah, which right. is the which is the main reason why if we did put it on the roof, that we would be asking for a lot more than a, than a minor overrun it'd be it's several meters above the height but the, the height limit yeah that's correct, that's correct. Yeah. yeah you could have a chair lift rather than a lift overrun sorry there was a question about some sort of a platform lift up an over is that a possibility I don't think we have ever, so, for a communal space like that, for common access, um, I mean, we'd obviously need um, the access consultant to confirm whether that would be acceptable or not in this situation, but we would have, we have never proposed such a kind of access um, when it's a common, perhaps it's possible if it was a sort of private access only, but for a common access, it, we would expect it needs to be a proper lift with, <laughs> with dimension for stretches. That's usually 
you know, the requirement for lists within multi residential that they're dimensioned that they can be used, they can facilitate a stretcher in it. Um, but again, we we'll need confirmation from the access consultant. But we, we have never dealt with that before. Yeah, I think the practicalities of a, a platform lift um, to access the rooftop communal open space is probably something um, we just haven't really considered. Um, yeah, and the practicalities of that as well. Can, can I just explain the dilemma that we're, we're uh, struggling with here? We, the panel, we had some discussion about uh, your proposal before. We're quite happy with the way you've dealt with the landscaping. We think uh, it's, uh, it's been dealt with extremely well, with the exception of where the basement is. And where the basement is for that 15 metres, the interface between uh, the proposal and the properties next door uh, is got this communal open space, which further limits the opportunity for screening along the boundary. Uh, so that seems to be an area we see as being um, deficient um, in, in trying to retain privacy for the neighbourhood of the north. I mean, yeah, I mean, I guess the other thing with our selection and positioning of this space on the ground level is we we did also look at other positions elsewhere on the ground level. Um, but the other reason why we ended up having it in the north eastern corner is um, obviously the the um, terraces to the north have sort of a I guess their sort of communal open space there as well. So I guess we've co-located our communal space adjacent to their communal space to try and minimise as much of those, you know, um, privacy impacts as possible there. Um, and, and it gets... Well, it, unfortunately, yeah. it sort of does stem from our restrictions with where we can place our OSD tank as well. So, I mean, previously, you know, the 900 mils separation or setback to the basement was majority to the northern um, edge. I guess what we've done is increase all of that to deep soil to, I guess, most of that car park footprint um, and really restrict it to that corner zone there where we had to put the OSD tank. So if, yeah. if, if it's a visual privacy objective um, that's a concern for the panel, um, the other alternative would be obviously to provide um, at the perimeter of that common open space, um, a, a height of privacy screening um, to, to the extent of um, raising the height of the balustrading and so on, um, at least to perhaps a 1.6 metre height or, or, or something like that, um, which could be incorporated with, within the, uh, the podium planting. Um, the reason I say that is that um, if, if, if that's really the concern is about achieving the privacy and we don't think that there's a privacy issue um, to start with because of the, the planting in the deep soil strip next to the boundary. Um, but to, um, to guarantee um, that, that interface um, doing what it needs to do, um, that could be a secondary um, solution. So until the time that the landscaping does grow to its mature heights and the blueberry ash do grow to significant heights, um, there could be, um, yes, essentially a privacy screen um, height around the perimeter of, of, of that raised, um, well, sorry, not raised, um, of that basement area. Um, so it's landscape plus a built form or a structure um, that's guaranteeing um, that that works. Okay, thank you. Panel, have any other questions? No. Mm -hmm. Thank you all for your attendance today. Uh, we'll deliberate over your responses and the report and make a determination a little bit later. I think probably towards the uh, end of the week, the, the matter will be printed on uh, online. So thank you all. Thank you. I appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.